Thanks for tuning in. This uh, module is on plural effusion. Many of the ultrasound images and videos are from the Division of Emergency Ultrasound at Massachusetts General Hospital. Um, just to start, in terms of doing a pleural effusion scan or looking for pleural effusion, what you're looking for and what you're needing to use is a low frequency, low frequency transducer. Um, we here typically use the uh, curvilinear um, transducer, but really any of the low frequency transducers will do the job. So in evaluating for pleural effusion, um, and just by way of uh, reminder, these are the lung zones that we typically scan, when, especially when we're looking for B lines, and we want to evaluate for different areas of the lung. Um, for pleural effusion, primarily areas that we're interested in are zone 4 and zone 8. Um, and these are kind of the dependent portion of the lungs. And what that would look like is you're essentially obtaining a uh, coronal scan of the right upper quadrant. You can see here, kind of at the level of the diaphragm. And then on the left upper quadrant, you're, you're obtaining in a similar view at the level of the diaphragm. But here, you're actually needing to be a lot more posterior or closer to the bed. Um, and a little bit closer to the to um, towards the head, and in both instances, your transducer marker is pointing towards the patient's head. So, what would that look like in the right upper quadrant? What you see here is the liver, um, and to the right hand side is the kidney, um, and then typically you would see the diaphragm that's kind of at the superior margin of the liver. And then in the left upper quadrant, you'll see a very similar picture, in fact. Um, again, you have your intra-abdominal organ, and in this case would be the spleen. You've got your kidney. Superior to that, would, to, to the um, uh, spleen, would be the diaphragm. And in this clip, you can actually see the lung coming into view very nicely as the patient takes a deep breath. You can see both the pleural line over here, and you can see evidence of 1A line as well. So in assessing for pleural effusion, uh, what you're looking for is uh, an anechoic um, area. Um, it could be complex as well, but we can talk about that more in the, uh, in the thoracentesis module. Um, but really, typically, you're looking for an anechoic region above the level of the diaphragm. And in fact, and more importantly, you're actually looking for the evidence of spine that continues beyond the diaphragm. This is in contrast to a setting where you actually see an echoic region above the diaphragm here, but you can see that the spine actually abruptly ends at the level of the diaphragm. And even though this is all black, there is no pleural effusion in this patient, um, and sticking a needle into um, the pleural space would be a huge mistake in this patient. So. Again, one more example in contrast where you can actually see the spine continuation very nicely um, above the level of the diaphragm, which is here. And that's kind of what the spine looks like, and you can image that quite, ni quite nicely. You're looking for that echogenic uh, scalloping appearance uh, that would be, you know, all these uh, spinal contours. Why is the spine such an important sign? Um, well, when you're imaging, you've got your transducer in the right upper quadrant here, your transducer marker towards the head, and on the left-hand side here on the screen. The left-hand side of the screen or towards the head will be the liver right here, the kidney over here, right, right there. Okay, but as the sound waves travel through, as long as you're imaging deep into the patient, you should, at the midline, hit the spine, and that's why you can actually see it quite nicely. Again, you see that echogenic uh, scalloping appearance that would such be uh, supportive of having image the midline of the patient, the spine. Um, again, sorry, diaphragm, spine right there. Now, as you, as sound waves, as you're trying to image closer up in the thorax, as sound waves actually hit areas of the lung where there is air, that sound waves actually can't travel because air is a huge reflector. So all that sound waves are going to come back to your transducer and all this area should normally not be evaluated or evaluatable um, by your ultrasound. So if you actually can see the extension of your spine beyond that, that suggests that sound waves are somehow being able to travel through. And typically that's either pleural effusion or consolidation that allows it to do that. 
So in this setting here, something is allowed to allowing my sound waves to travel through. Um, and um, you can see the spine right there as it comes into view, that anechoic region. The fact that I can see it makes me think, okay, something is letting my sound waves through. What might that be? And given that it's anechoic uh, in appearance, this is consistent with pleural effusion. So in summary, uh, in evaluating for pleural effusions um, in the lower lung zones, um, it's important that you use a low frequency transducer because that's the only transducer that allows you to image deep enough towards the spine. And you must clearly demonstrate the presence of the diaphragm, um, the intra-abdominal organ underneath that, as well as the presence of the spine that extends above the diaphragm uh, if you're gonna call a pleural effusion. And uh, thank you for tuning in.